Hello and welcome to module 2, adding content and managing your Google Sites. This is part 4 and this is module 2 in a 5 module course entitled Becoming an E-Teacher. If you're watching this video on YouTube you can see the entire course with all supporting documents and materials free at the following web address. In the first part we're going to look at managing your site. When you're managing your site, most of your commands will be found here in More Actions. To begin, we're going to go to Manage Site. If I go down to General, I can change some of the uh, features of the actual site itself, for example, the site name. At the moment, the site name is Fifi Teaches. If I go back to the site, you'll see it says Fifi Teaches as one word. We can change this. Click Save. and I'll go back and we can see the name now says Fifi Teaches capitalized as two words. I'm going to go into Maths Class and Maths Class Resources 2. Now I want to move this page. I want to move it from under Maths Class 2 to under Maths Class 1. Perhaps I want to do this because Maths Class 2 has closed and I want to move all these resources underneath. Click on More Actions, click on Move Page and decide where it goes to. If your page isn't listed here, click on Site Map and we see Maths Class 1. Click on Maths Class 1 and click Move. Now you can see this page has been moved to under Maths Class 1. We're going to move it back again. Once again, More Actions, Move Page, Site Map, find the page you want it to be under, click on it, click move. Now your page has been moved. If you wish to delete the page, more actions, delete page and click delete and it will disappear. We're not going to do this. Click cancel. If you look at this page you will see comments. Comments is activated which means students can write comments. Indeed anybody can write comments on this page. If you want to change this, click on more actions and click on page settings. Here you will see four options. Page title, links to subpages, allow attachments and allow comments. At the moment allow comments is activated. If I turn this off and click save, you'll see it has gone. I can go back in again, page settings, and this time I will turn on attachments and allow comments. Now students or anybody can add comments also, anybody who wishes to can now add an attachment simply by clicking Choose File and selecting the file they would like to upload. You must choose what permissions you would like for each of your pages. If you want your students to be allowed to upload files, then you must do so through page settings for those pages where you want those options to be available. And the same with comments. Finally, if you go into More Actions and you click on Page Preview, you will see what your page will look like in a normal browser when it is not being edited. This allows you to see exactly what your students will see when you're editing your page. And there, that's it. They are the very, very basic features you have for managing your site. Now we're going to talk about ways you can share your website. If I click on more actions and I go to share site, we go to this page here. The first thing we see is advanced permissions. And it says anyone in the world may view this site. If I click here, that means this site will be viewable by anybody who has the web address. If I take it off, it means it's only viewable by those people I invite. Over here we can see people with access. Fifi, as the owner, has access, but she has also invited four people to become collaborators. So altogether five people have access to this site and have editing privileges. At any time you can click remove to change these. You can do the same thing with your site. You can invite somebody to be an owner. You can invite somebody to be a collaborator or you can invite somebody only as a viewer. Let's talk about this option for a moment. 
to invite somebody as a viewer. Here, the box letting anybody in the world see the site is off. That means the site is private and it is locked by password. If you want to have a website for your class, which only your students can see, this is what you do. Leave this box unchecked. Enter in the email addresses of those students you would like to invite. Once you have a list of all the students you would like to invite, click Invite these people. They will then receive an email, and when they click on a link in that email, they will be allowed to come along and view your site. They will first need to log into their email, so you know it, it is them who, who is viewing the site. So you can invite these students to simply be viewers. Now we're going to have a look at making a class project website. Here we are in Fifi's art class homepage. And Fifi's art class want to work on a project on Renaissance art in Italy. And instead of putting their pictures and their posters and their text on the wall of the classroom, they think it would be a much better idea if they created a website so they could work collaboratively from home on their computers, adding lots of cool media resources. And you think this is a good idea as well. So what do you do? Well, the ideal solution is to make a new separate website for this project. If you want to do this, go above Create Page and Edit Page and click on My Sites. Here you'll see Fifi's websites, Fifi Teaches and Becoming an E-Teacher. Click on Create New Site. If you've seen Module 1, you'll recognize this page. Leave blank template, put the name of your site in, choose a theme, we'll choose ICE, go down the end, enter the security word, and click Create Site. And there we go, we have a brand new site created. Now we have a site, we need to be able to invite our students to be collaborators. Click on More Actions, Sharing Site. You can see that there's one owner and no collaborators. To make someone a collaborator, we need their email address. So enter the email addresses of your students. Remember to separate each email address with a comma. When you have all the email addresses of your students in, make sure to add collaborate and click invite these people. They will then get an email and they will have a link and from this link they will find the web page and they will be able to work as collaborators. They can add content, edit content and indeed create whole new pages. At the moment I'm leaving this on anyone in the world can see. And that's it. Now you've made your new site, the question is how do we connect this new site into your old site, your main teaching website? Here's how you do it. Click on return to site and copy the web address. Click copy, click on my sites, go back to Fifi Teaches and go into art class. So we want to put a link here for this project site. I'm going to click on edit page and I'm going to put a line of text here. And I want this word here, this, to be the link word. So I highlight the word, click on link, click on website, paste the website address for the new page, click open a new window, and click OK. And there we are. Click save. Now, anybody who clicks on this page, or this word, will go automatically to the home site. Simple as that. And in fact, we can do the reverse. We can take this link, copy, go to the home page, click Edit, make this a bit bigger, highlight the word, click Link, Website, Paste, open new window and click save and now we can go back and forth between each page simple as that and that is the end of part 4 of module 2 this module is part of a 5 module course entitled becoming an e-teacher if you're watching this video on YouTube you can see the entire course with all the supporting documents for free at the address below